So we've seen how to use resistance, continuity, and voltage now on a multimeter. So the last few things are to look at the amps and the diode modes. So let's first take a look at how to measure current in amps. We'll see how much this console draws. I'll show you also how we can test a clean juice to see one of it's functioning correctly and two, how much power the system draws by going through the clean juice and explain how to get accurate readings. A multimeter will be more accurate for current draw readings, whereas a bench power supply is more convenient for current draw readings, but they both have the purpose. So let's see how we set up the multimeter to read how much amps have been drawn in a particular part of a circuit. So the first thing is to set up our multimeter. You can see we need to go to the amps mode. So in this case, we'll do amps. And you'll see this particular meter can do uh, AC and DC amp readings. We also have microamps, which is a much smaller unit, similar to millivolt. We have a much smaller unit of amps. So if you want to draw a really small current draw, we'll see that on the clean juice. So if we turn the meter to amps, the next important step is remove the red lead from your volt side and go to your amp side. If you have fuses and multiple ports like this, you can see it's telling you the smaller fuse, 400 milliamps, is for the milliamp current draw. So if we're drawing something we'd expect to be in the milliamp range, less than 400 milliamps, you'd use this port. Otherwise, use the 10 amp fuse. Most meters, if they're not expensive, simply have one anyway. So red in the amp connector, and then let's just turn on the meter. And there we have zero amps. Now you do have to bear in mind when you're testing this, you can blow the fuse easily in your multimeter if you don't do it right. It's fused to 10 amps. So if we were to just short this straight over a battery, it would blow the fuse inside the multimeter straight away. So think before you use the ammeter mode. You can obviously just replace the fuse inside, but for example, in this multimeter, the fuses are about seven pound each. So you don't want to go just blowing the fuses. So just bear that in mind as you're measuring. So let's start with how we measure current. So it doesn't matter what the device is, whether you have um, a battery powered device, whether you just have a Game Boy that you want to insert batteries in, uh, whether you want to draw it straight from a console on a particular line. The idea is the current in question, and you normally go from, it doesn't really matter, but you'd normally go from the positive side of the circuit. So wherever's delivering the power, you can go the ground side and intersect the path to ground, but typically you go on the positive side. So these leads have to go between the connection. So if you imagine, say we wanted to see how much this battery is currently providing power to this board. We want to cut this wire and send the red side to the positive side of the wire. So in this case, the battery is the thing with the actual power. So we'd cut this wire, we'd connect the lead here, and then the negative side going towards ground, we'd connect here. So we effectively have the multimeter passing through this wire. Now you can imagine that's a destructive way of doing this. Another way would be to find another place to intersect the connection. So for example, the output here, before it goes to the console, we'd have to put the red wire here and the black going to the console. So you have to think of, you've got to intersect the flow. Your meters have to sit in between. So the power comes out of the battery through this red lead, all the way into the meter, through the measurement, back out the black lead, all the way down and carrying on into the circuit. So you can't measure, for example, um, amps by touching over the two pins here, and we'd probably blow the fuse because we're providing a path. So if we were to just touch over this, I'm pretty sure we'd end up blowing the fuse in this because the battery would provide too much current. What we can do instead for this quick test is we can just take say a 3k resistor something like high resistance and instead of just dead shorting the battery we could and you don't have to do anything you don't have to cut any wires here and all we're really testing in this instance is how much this battery can provide so if we were to just connect the meter straight over these pins as i mentioned we're just going to be providing a dead short path and it's like dead shorting the battery so instead, I can just hold, and you'd obviously do this by soldering if you wanted, but I can just hold this resistor here or wrap it around a few times. So we have a resistor on the end, limiting the flow of current. But if I just go, say, to the ground of the USB, it's still the same connection as the ground at the battery here, so it's just easier for me to show you this. And if I was now to touch this 
other end of the resistor on positive, you can see there we're drawing 1.5 milliamps. So if we were to go to the milliamp connector, for example, in this meter, it will detect that it's in the milliamp connector. And let's get a more accurate reading. And we touch on there, and you can see we get 1.327 milliamps. Now, if we did the math VIR, you'd take the voltage. So we just go to voltage, swap the leads over, measure the battery voltage. You can see we have 3.9, so VIR, is voltage divided by resistance, in this case 3000. And if you do that on a calculator, you'll get to 1.3 milliamps. So what we did there was resisted the ability of the battery to provide any more power than what's allowed through this resistor. So we could just do a quick measurement. But as mentioned, don't just go probing around with these leads when they're in the amp mode. You can blow the fuse in the meter. So that's just a quick test there to show you easily how to measure, say, a battery. And now if we want to test how much, say, static current this clean juice is drawing. So while it's turned off now and not running and doing nothing, this should be very low, uh, you know, less than a milliamp on power draw. So you'd have to find a way, for example, you could pull the battery out. So usually it's destructive. So I'm just gonna sacrifice this one battery to show you how to do this. So if I just cut here on the battery lead, I'll just strip the lead down. Just pre tin these ends. And that just makes the wire more firm to grip. And now I could just hold the leads over. For example, plug this back into the board. It will provide no power. But if I were to now bring the multimeter in, and we'll go to milliamp mode because this should be, you know, nearly nothing. If we just take the red lead, go into the actual clean juice, hold that on my hand, and connect here you can see it's drawing 0.04 milliamps. So that means while the circuit's not turned on, it's drawing 0.03 milliamps. If we were to turn it on and connect, we shouldn't draw much more, so we can stay in milliamps mode. And it'll take a minute to just get an accurate measurement. You can see there it's only drawing 1.6 milliamps turned on. And that will be this LED here turning on. So the system draws almost nothing. Again, just double check, turn the system off, pass the power through the leads, and you can see we have 0.03 milliamps, or 0.04 at worst. And so you can see what that's doing. As we've seen on here, this lead just comes to here, connects to the top of there. So basically the power flow comes out of the battery, through the red lead, through this lead, through the current measuring system inside the multimeter, out this black lead, back down to this red lead, and there's your kind of circuit that you see. It's like a small loop, so that the power is passing through. Instead of just being directly sent to the board like this, you have to intersect the path of power, is the idea. So you can see measuring current on a multimeter isn't the easiest thing to do. It normally involves having to cut some form of wire uh, to do a measurement. Now, when you use a bench power supply, it's as simple as just connecting the power. So instead of connecting a battery here, you would just say solder the wires to the positive and the ground, and then provide your bench power into the system and replace it from the battery. So now we know how much this clean juice draws, for example, when it's turned off and connected. So if we want to calculate how long this clean juice would last by being connected but not turned on, we first just take the battery current and this battery is rated at 3000 milliamp hours. There's two of them, so that's 6000 milliamp hours, which means if we were to draw a milliamp permanently, with these two batteries connected, it would last 6000 hours. Now we're drawing 0 0.04 of a milliamp. So if you do 6000 divided by 0 0.04, you get 150,000 hours. So if we divided that by days, it's 24 hours in a day, that's 6,250 hours. If we divide that by years, say 365, this should last around 17 years while turned off. So you can see there's no need when you design a circuit correctly to have any form of on-off switch. That's why things like your consoles typically just stay off and they're perfectly fine. Now you won't get that lifespan, you won't get 17 years because the battery has its own internal capacitance and discharges over time doing nothing. So you'd easily get you know, a few years without a shadow of a doubt, but 
if you were to just draw a milliamp, you all of a sudden go from 150,000 hours to 6,000 hours, which isn't even a year. So the slightest battery draw on your circuit when it's off will affect the lifespan. So now we know that, let's just use this battery. And let's say we wanted to know how much a Game Gear console draws. And this is a funny thing because all the documentation online before I wrote mine, everywhere I could see stated completely wrong values for how much this system draws. Also a lot of manufacturers that make hardware for the consoles also invalidly state all their ratings, how much power their systems draw, how much power their screens draw, things like that. It's really easy to measure when you have decent equipment. So let's see a stock console, how much it draws. So for that, all we have to do is connect the clean juice up to the system and we'll leave the switch on so I can do this one handed. I've made sure I'm in the 10 amp fuse mode. And now all we have to do is connect our probes, one over here. So remember that if you connect these back to front, by the way, you'll just get a negative um, amp reading. It won't actually affect anything. You'll just see negative as in, say we were charging this battery, you'd see a negative flow backwards. And I'll show you that in a second. But let's just connect this up. And you can see there we are drawing 0.53 amps to power this game gear. If we were to turn it off, we drop back down to the 0 0.0003, turn it back on, and there's half an amp. So this system, effectively the game gear, is drawing half an amp. Now you have to bear in mind that's also including any losses in this circuit. So the battery itself is providing half an amp, but the battery comes in, it gets regulated, it gets power path switched, and then it comes out here. So we have a 5 volt regulator, we have a 34 volt regulator, all these things have losses, usually about 10%. So if we wanted to test the console, we'd have to actually directly power the five volts onto the circuit here. And for that, it's much easier to use a bench power supply. So when we come to using bench power supplies, I'll show you how to test the real current draw of this game gear without the use of a clean juice. So now, in order to ignore voltage, because we've powered this from 3.9 volts, when we come to do the other test at five volts, there's two different voltages, which means the current, which is related to the voltage, won't be an accurate reading for how much power is being used. For that, we use wattage. And to calculate wattage, you take the voltage, 3.9, and divide it by the amps, so 0.5, say, for in this example. So that would mean this system is drawing, currently, 1.95 watts. Now, typically, I know the Game Gears draw about 1.5 watts, so 1.9 watts is a little bit high. But that's how we work out the power draw, regardless of voltage, that this game gear is drawing by passing through the clean juice as well. That's measured specifically the entire power draw of the game gear being powered from this battery. If you wanted to measure, say, just the 5 volt rail, you could join these wires back together. You could take the 5 volt wire, which is the bottom one here. We could cut this wire. And then again, join our leads between just the five volt rail. This would measure the current that's being passed through here on the five volt rail. It would bypass all of the clean juice circuit. It would bypass the 34 volt rail and it would tell us only what the five volt rail on the game gear is drawing. So that's how you'd kind of measure different parts of the system. Wherever your leads intersect and pass through, you can measure the power too. So I've got a USB power cable here. Not sure what this one's capable of delivering. It'll be at least an amp and a half. I'm not sure of the charge state of this battery. Uh, well, we did actually measure it at 3.9, so it's fairly charged. So if we plug the cable in, the flashing light's indicating that there's no battery. That's the indicator. So green means there's good USB power. And the flashing orange light indicates that there's no battery connected. So if we now connect again, if you remember, from the side that we're interested in seeing what's providing power, so the red lead of the battery to red, and we connect the black lead to the one going to the system, what we should find is how much power is this battery giving to the system. So if we were to touch on the red lead now and make the connection, we should see this light stop and go solid orange, which means it's charging. There we go. And you can see the current draw is minus 1.1 amp. So that means because the red here is on the battery, it means from the red side, there's negative 1.1 amps, which means the battery is receiving 1.1 amps. 
You can see it fluctuates because that's how the battery charge is currently working. Plus I'm holding this with my fingers so the resistance is pretty bad on and off me just touching like this. It's not making like the best connection. But if I keep it fairly solid you'll see it's sending 1.1 uh, amps to the battery. If this was flatter it would send closer to 2 amps, 2.5 amps. Especially if there was two batteries because it would be charging them both up. So by showing that, it's showing that this battery charger is working. It's sending the power to the battery and charging the battery. So hopefully that's given you some idea of how to measure amps in a system. And you can see it's a little bit more tricky than just measuring voltage and resistance. You normally have to intersect and pass through the power in a system. So one last really useful example is say we have a Game Boy and you don't have a bench power supply but we want to know uh, what power this system's drawing. So perhaps we suspect there's a dead short. The simplest way to do it when it's a battery powered system, using the same principle, you have to know where the power's coming and going to. So in a Game Boy, the power comes in here. So we can see through this board here, and we can see there's the power switch, there's the positive rail into the circuit board, and there's the negative out. So you can see inside the circuit board, we have the positive here, the negative here. And obviously there's nothing here because all that happens is when we place a battery like this in the back cover, it makes contact here. So we have positive here going to negative. We then put a battery this way around. This touches the negative side. And then when we join the two with the spring that's in the back cover, all we're doing is joining these two together. Once you join them two together, you imagine you have negative here through 1.5 volts, joining it together, so in essence doing this, so you have one path, and when you put two batteries in series, they add up, so 1.5 volts plus 1.5 volts is 3 volts. So all we're doing when we put a battery in a system like this, is we're passing ground through, joining them here, coming down and connecting the 3 volts to the system. When you do more, like the Game Gear, they just simply carry on in another chain, and you add up the voltage. So the best way I find to do this on an actual system is put the positive side in first because that's hard to get into. And now we need to ultimately do this. So we check the console works. If we can intersect, say, this battery making contact here and bridge through, we leave the console on. We should be able to get a current reading. So we connect the positive on there and touch under. We can see there the system is drawing around 78 to 80 milliamps and that's without having to cut any wires or do anything special we can test this console is drawing power if there was a dead short inside the console so this wouldn't come on what you'd find is you would potentially blow the fuse in here so when you're doing this test and you're suspecting there's potentially a dead short you possibly want to do what i did and just put a resistor in line with this but specifically one that can handle the fuse in your multimeter but just bear in mind about the limit of the fuse inside your multimeter, so you don't go below the fuse. But hopefully this has helped you understand how to measure current. Again, like at all the other measurements, it's never as easy as it sounds, and there's also pitfalls and things to look out for. But hopefully this has been a good guide for you to understand how to measure current, as well as how to test clean juice, how to test the current draw of a Game Boy and a Game Gear, and it gives you enough info to try and start taking your own measurements. That's all for now and I'll see you in the next one.